Welcome to Lunch Story. In each episode, you will get a behind the scenes look at a course, a program, or for the cloud. Here is your host, Dr. Ada Fallon. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me. Today, I have a fabulous guest, Joy Brooks. Joy Brooks is a marketing veteran with roots in digital marketing or digital media, excuse me. Her passion for email marketing is only matched by her drive to stay in step with an industry in renaissance. Joy has been expertly handing, handling email marketing programs since Y2K. So Joy brings a vast amount of knowledge and expertise to this conversation that we'll have about launching, and email marketing. And our conversation will have two parts. We're going to talk about the technical work that Joy does, supporting brands and organizations launching their products and services. And then we're going to chat a little bit about Joy's career and how she launched herself as a consultant and expert. So Joy, thank you so much for joining me today. Let's start in that first part with the, the brands and organizations. Give us a bit of a feel um, about the types of products and or services you've launched. You don't need to be specific um, if, if you can't be, but you know, what, what, what kind of things have you helped organizations launch? Well, um, I've helped organizations actually launch their marketing, email marketing completely from scratch. So ah. supporting them over um, with all sorts of strategies and, and, and different types of launches, whether it's, um, launching a welcome or launching all of their campaigns um, right. launching all different types of strategies i've managed that with, with uh, teams i've managed that with uh, singular people so i've uh, worked it in many different ways it's always been an, uh, uh, an interesting experience <laughs> because um, it can take it could take a month it could take six months you know, it could take quite a while to get all their products online and to get them to a place where they're comfortable. I've actually launched one company two times. So ah. I've taken them um, from um, one ESP, from Acton over to Sharpspring, from Sharpspring over to Clavio. So um, I've done it with ESPs. Yes. Um, I've done it just with companies, you know, giving them a strategy and letting them walk away with it as well. Right. So it's um, always interesting to do win backs, um, to strategize about them, to actually plot them out and then create them and launch them and babysit them and um, tweak them and you know continue to um, manage different types of um, journey launches, um, yeah. you know, card abandonment, just developing um, a segment to see if a segment is there to, you know, to, to work a journey to launch it. So right, many right, right. Um, strategies that are required when you launch um, an email marketing. Um, yeah, that's a great point. And I feel like sometimes people use the word launch in so many different ways. In many of my other episodes that I've recorded, we've been talking about um, the launch as the process of bringing a product or a service to the marketplace. But I feel like you're bringing the, to my attention and everyone's attention that's watching the really important idea or um, perspective on how bringing an, sort of an automated, organized email marketing program into the world is a launch in and of itself, even, um, even if maybe the, there isn't a particular offer at the end having that process of, you know, how does this organization approach email marketing? How do we set it up? How do we provide really great experiences for our new subscribers? Um, and what actions are they taking to your point in terms of cart abandonment? You know, they go to a website, they don't buy anything. <laughs> they, 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 you know, they add things to the cart, they don't buy anything. Um, you know, what do we do next? Or in terms of win back, it's like, okay, they've they, you know, been working with us, we're excited. They kind of ghosted, for lack of a better term. <laughs> how, how, do, how do we re-engage this conversation? So that's a really interesting perspective. I've never looked at it that way, but you're so, so right. What do you feel like, and this might be a hard question, putting together all of your years of experience, what do you feel like are the things that organizations get wrong? 
<laughs> when they're looking to start this process. The conversation I had uh, just today on LinkedIn, whereby somebody said that uh, business owners don't stick with programs. <sighs> so they'll say, oh yeah, I agree to this. They'll go a month or two into it. Oh, it's not working. And yes. just they'll leave it. They'll wow. Leave it. And they may not be measuring it properly. Mm. They, may not, they may not have attached the value to an email co uh, contact, or they yes. may be watching conversions. There may be um, no easy way to identify a contact with a dollar amount for mm -hmm. a company. Perhaps it's um, a little bit more difficult than um, you do when you have a specific product that represents yes. This contact purchased this, therefore we made a conversion of X. Right, um, right, right, right. And then there are some conversions that take years. So, you know, if, if you're buying a, a notebook and a pen as opposed to property right. or, um, you know, um, a car or, a, you know, a, a train or, you know, any large, you know, welding equipment, things of that nature, if you're doing those types of things, the conversion is different. Sure. And it's somewhat difficult to track. Yes. yes. So yes. Um, abandoning marketing, I think, is painful, and I see it too often. Wow. They'll do that because they can't attribute anything to, to the effort, and sales is leading the way. Mm -hmm. so sales has mm -hmm. its way of saying, well, we sold, you know, so much. What yes. did marketing do? towards that effort. Right, 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 right. And if it's really not aligned, or if, you've, if they're competing, and I've often seen marketing departments compete with sales, mm. whereby marketing should be a service to sales, and sales should be working with customer service and marketing, um, sometimes I see it as it's competition, and in, in that respect, it doesn't work. Right, And right. You know, the CEOs or the CFOs are forced to um, dump programs right that is such a good point that's such a good point is like answering that question is it working and I think your answer grows two questions in my mind how long does it take and this really important part of attribution like how do we say when we do have a success when we do get that conversion we get that new client whatever happens what wh how do, who do we give credit for that um, that's so interesting. So let's, let's tackle the first one first. First things first, how long does it take? So, you know, a month to me, it seems way too short <laughs> to say, oh, you know, this worked or this didn't work. Do you, have you found in all of your years of experience a good time frame? Does you it know, I usually, I like three months. Three, three months. months. Okay. And then increments of three months after that. So what I'll do with a company is, for example, um, a launch with a client that had no website that really was stripped of everything and yeah. wanted to do email marketing yeah. mm -hmm. so i can't do any any uh captures i can't capture any people because there's no website for a sign up so they're not building a, they weren't going to build a website either oh they felt that they couldn't do that so it was sort of wow. working against myself yeah and I decided what we're going to do is pure lead generation okay so we're, what we're doing is what your sales department would do. Right. But, we're, but what we're going to do it in an email without sales. And I said, in three months, what you should do is you take a look at the stats and then you have sales intervene. So right. you have three months of campaigns go out. Right. You've got five or 500 people, whatever, however many people have, have shown interest. Sure, and sure, interest sure. is not just opening, but opening and clicking. Right, right, It right, was right, white right. papers, so we were downloading white papers. Okay. I said, within that three months, you see people that have opened and clicked, yep. and you have your sales, get yep. in touch with them. So instead of sales sitting there waiting and calling people, three months, sales gets involved. Three months, sales gets involved. Well, it was three months, and um, I said, you know, it, it, it was a it was a purchase list, which is a no no email marketing list. Yeah, I was going to ask where are these people? If they don't have an email, where are they coming from? So yeah, that was my that was my fear. Okay, and, yep. <laughs> So um, within three months, there was a list of 13,000, and maybe we had, honestly, maybe we had 20 people of interest. But, wow. but, 
yeah. in this world, in, in his particular world, yes. 20 people could be hundreds of thousands of dollars. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we, again, we, we're not talking about pens. Right. Right. We're talking about a high end investing. Sure. 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 Okay? Sure. So, so he really had some meat to go for. And if he had followed through, he had trust in the program. Right. And he had sales follow through. He made a, he may have converted. So that's he some... felt that he felt yeah. that there was no purpose that, it, that, you know, 20 out of 13,000 was dismal. And I kept on saying 20 out of a purchase list is, is whip it for Yeah. 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 Cause these people literally, you know, came out of the woodwork. <laughs> right. It had no idea potentially you had even no existed. Exist. You don't have a website that they even showed any interest or trust at all. You know, wow. a happy dance. 20, yeah, that would be thrilling, I think. So my point to him at the end of the three months, and I didn't, I, you know, I wasn't comfortable spending his money. Right. Needless to say, you know, I'm supposed to be helping him. That's what I, I don't feel, maybe I'm old fashioned. I don't feel like I'm there to spend people's money. I'm For there sure. to, to help them. For sure. For sure. Make, you know, make their business successful. Yeah. So I said to him at three months, I said, this is what I suggest. Mm -hmm. Have sales, contact some of these people. Yep. If you feel that, you know, they're warmer than they were before, let's discuss this again. Right. He goes, let me think about it and I'll come back to you, of which he did not. Ah, uh, I wonder what his anticipated results were. Oh, from he thought that because he was purchasing a list, his, that he was going to make millions. And, the, oh. and no amount of no, no, no. Yeah, no, no. That's very interesting. That that is interesting. Well, I feel like in some ways it was a great success. In one, um, you know, stating you know yet again that purchasing lists is not the best strategy. But then even though with a solid email marketer, someone with your experience, that you could take. 13,000 people that don't know any, don't know this company. They have no idea. They don't even have a website and you can get 20 sort of qualified and interested people is phenomenal. <laughs> so that's the, that's the, 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 I tell him um, was, I said, you know, consider remarketing um, yeah. name out there, you know, because if anybody puts in specific keywords, you'll start showing up for sure. And I said, You're going to have to build a website. Or some sort of presence, okay. some somehow. Okay. Um, interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. But what I also think is fascinating is you know what got us on this this trend in general, this three month plan. So three months, honestly, I wasn't in my brain thinking. I knew a month was too short, as I said earlier. But three months wasn't really on my it's the tip of my tongue. But as you explained what right. happened, and I'm reflecting on my own experiences, I'm like, yeah, three yeah. months is a great amount of time to try something and see what the results are. And I love your, this cyclical approach that you're recommending. It's what I recommend to the people I work with as well, right? It's not like a set it and forget it thing, right? When you, when you launch something, um, when you put a new marketing program or a new course or a new product out in the world, it's not like you tell people once and you're just like, yeah, all the money comes. Uh, <laughs> it is this cyclical evaluation process. Um, and, and, and by revisiting, you get to make a choice to, to leave or to stop. Um, but also you get a choice to continue or to tweak, which is exactly. really, really interesting. Wow. Okay. So that's the biggest challenge that you've seen and putting it all together is people kind of giving up too soon. So would you feel like, well, you had recommendations to this gentleman to continue after three months, but um, do, you, do you feel like committing to just one three-month cycle is enough or going into it thinking, okay, I'm going to check in every three months, but I'm going to do this a couple um, times? Well, I would do the check. You know, I, I, I hover. I'm a big hover person. <laughs> and I, I don't let, I don't even let it go. The client may be waiting for three months, but I'm I'm on 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 it and all over it all the time. I see. I it see. may need a tweak. It may uh, you know the strategy may have seemed good on paper, but as it's playing out, oh wait a minute, uh, you know we're leaking. What the heck's right. going on here? Right, right, right. So um, I'm always looking at things and making recommendations. But I you know three months, I'd say don't give up at least for six months. For Don't six. give up at six months. Because at six months, you I mean, we're talking about 90 days and an email 90 days means is a big thing because in 90 right. days you can churn 
and address out completely. So in 90 days, somebody gives up an email address. In 90 days, they're not interested in the brand anymore. They're with a competitor or they you know, have lost interest completely. In 90 days, they change their um, ISP and they're, you know, they're, no, they're not getting this service, they're getting that service. I mean, there's so many things that can happen in 90 days that um, it works with churn in itself Mm -hmm. And then um, you can, you know, you can make adjustments within that 90 day period, but don't let it go. Tweak it in 30, you know, tweak it in that three months. Yeah. Run it again because is it an aberration? Right, 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 right. You know, right, because you, you need a certain amount of data to be able to make a valid choice. I, right? I mean, you may find in three months that, um, you know, something can happen, right? You could have a product that, I mean, COVID, for example, uh, yeah. is, your, is your perfect situation. You yeah. have something that um, happens, whether it happens for a long, a long amount of time, whether it's regional, wh whether, you know, whatever it is, it, it may be happening behind the scenes and you don't even know it's happening, mm. right? So you may see in three months, something's not right here. Right, right. You know, what do we need to do? It, I wouldn't say give up unless you can absolutely quantify this is not going to work because right right, right, right. um you know you, you you start you know you have a product that has a ha, has an ingredient that suddenly you know cdc is saying <laughs> you've got to pull out you know right. you've got to pull it out yeah um you know give it six months because the first three months this happens yes and you've got a baseline right what happened in the next three months right Right, right, right. The and and what happened, can, something else happened. For sure, for sure, for sure. I love, I love so much of what you're saying because not only is this, this is great for any business owner or organization that before they start on this process, being it introducing a, a robust marketing plan or trying to promote a particular product or service, to sit back and sort of before that process start, go into it saying, hey, six months. <laughs> I'm giving this six months. And like just the mental state right. is better. Like in, it's very different from thinking. And sometimes, you know, I might meet clients and they're like, yeah, three months from now, I mean, not, I mean, months is a long time. Three weeks from now, I want to sell this mark, this membership program, or I want to sell this online course. And you're just like, what? <laughs> like that's not, that's not enough time. And I'm looking to make millions of dollars in that amount of time. That's not necessarily reasonable, but to sit back and say, okay, I'm going to give it three months to establish myself, set a baseline, grow my list, maybe establish my list, and another three months to really see how, what level I can take it to is so, so wise. Um, and that's one- You really do need to take a pulse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, if it's flat or receding or whatever, then there's something wrong. You know, you don't continue with something that's failing. Right, If it's right. slow growth, you may want to say give it another three months. If it's slow growth, is it exponential? So it's slow in the beginning, but suddenly it hits a point where it's bang. You know, you don't know. So you've got to give it some time. You've got to give it some nation time for it to grow like a child. You don't say three-year-old, oh, you're, that's it. You'll never learn anything. I give up on you. That's a great analogy. That's a great analogy. But what I also feel is fabulous to tie in um, the time to the other part of the question I had earlier is this idea of attribution because what are you actually measuring? What are you measuring? And, and who kind of gets credit along the way is really, really important. And if you can think of both of those things up front, it's, it's extremely important. I was, I was recently working on a, a, a blog post actually about the things that I think people need to collect <laughs> in their sort of email marketing um, accounts, right? Like what are the types of every ESP or inter, like email service provider does it differently, but tags, merge fields, custom fields, whatever you want to call them. Right. Like what is the kind of stuff you need to start collecting so that you can have this, this trail of, oh, here's subscriber A, subscriber A signed up in this place. They looked on these pages, they made these purchasers or they talked to this person. What are the things you need to keep track of? Um, and attribution is so important um, from the work that I do just to make sure I can understand the data, but you brought up really great points in terms of internal politics <laughs> and having, and having a way to justify your, your, the your point, existence. The point is that um, sales needs to be working with marketing. Marketing needs to be working with sales. Yeah. So if you launch something in marketing and if sales can run with it, great. 
if they're pushing back, you got to find out why they're pushing back. For sure. it, there may be valid reasons. For sure. There may sure. be ego involved. They want to do it. But, you know, mm, it yeah. may be valid that they can't push it because of this reason. Right. Um, right. They may find that their clients don't resonate with the message coming out of marketing. In other words, the voice isn't there. So mm. I got to work with them. Um, and sometimes there's a wall. Sometimes right. there's a wall. And sometimes um, companies are so large and sales and marketing are so large that they never can get together. Right. 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 You know, you may have these huge companies where, you know, sales is in Cincinnati and marketing is in New York. And, you know, when are they going to get together? And that retreat that happens every five years. Right. So I can, you know, I, there's, there are valid reasons why marketing, marketing doesn't always work. Mm -hmm. But my point is that it, for it to really work, you've got to take all of the pieces and sales this is a component of marketing, right. customer service is also yes. a touch point, point of sale. All of those pieces need to be in this, you know, need, need to be in that round um, place where you can get an understanding of it as a holistic entity. What, mm -hmm. where is it suffering and right. how to fix it? It's not suffering in marketing all by itself because it doesn't exist in marketing all by itself. Unless they're idiots in marketing and they're, you know, their voice is not at all aligned with the company. Right. And they refuse to do social. I mean, if they're doing, if they're making really bad decisions. Right. It's one thing, but odds are that's not happening. Probably not. Happening. But if you put marketing in a silo, you know, just like data in a silo, if you've got your if you got your data over here and sales is over here and customer service is there and marketing's over there and nobody wants to talk with each other, it's always going to fail. For sure, for sure, for sure. And I feel like the uh, the example that you used was for a large organization, which is so true. People in different maybe physical locations not able to speak to each other. But even no matter what size the organization, even if it's just one person, this idea of looking at the whole process, sort of soup to nuts identifying the key steps along the way, hopefully tracking those steps along the way, then that, that will help you with these three month milestones that, you've, that we've talked about earlier to say like, what's going on, right? Because if you don't have that information collected, um, what are you gonna do? You're gonna say like, okay, it's been three months. <laughs> Great, um, you know, like, and you might just make in decisions from who knows what. There's way too much access to way too much data out in the world right now for people to, to just kind of have, there's just too much possibility to use data to help you make those decisions, which is really, really important. It, it, goes, along, it goes along the lines of um, when I was marketing and it was print, so yes. there was no digital, yeah. and we used to create sell sheets. Yeah. Sale. Now, the whole, we sat down with sales and said, give us everything about the product. Right. You know, we need a photo shoot. We need to know the specs. We need to know everything about the product. We're going to put together sell sheets for you. Mm -hmm. Give them those sell sheets. If sales is not going to hand out those sell sheets, what do we do? What's marketing doing? Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure, for it's sure. It's the same effort. You sit down with sales and you say, how do you sell to your customers? What are the points? What do they need to know? You right. put that in your email marketing. It has replaced the sell sheet. For sure, for sure, for sure. And so sales can say, I'm going to pick up where that, where that sell sheet left off. I used to hand it out to somebody. Hi, how do you do? My name is sales representative. How do you do? Here's my sell sheet. Can we make a meeting? Can we talk? Are you right. busy now? You know, I'd like to tell you about my product. Right. So the email goes out. That's what it's doing. Right. I love that. That's a beautiful analogy. Because you've clicked and opened and you have engaged in the brand. All he needs to do is to get some, you know, take it, take it from that point forward. You've done this much work for him. Right. Right. I love now, that. He's not, if he, if he's holding back, if sales is holding back and marketing has nothing or it's giving a, you know, it's giving them this and, and sales can't take it from that point. Right then, you know, it's doomed. And that's when the program doesn't work. Right, 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 right. And, and, and maybe at no fault of the technology or even how the technology has been implemented, but the overlying systems and the right. dynamics or are... Strategy and avoid. We'll try this. Why? Yeah. I don't know. It's, nobody's giving us information. We'll try it. 
Interesting. But I love how this idea of, I've never thought of it before, of taking a sales sheet and almost, especially through a, an automation or a journey, you're almost delivering the pieces of the sales sheet that are most relevant at the right time, right? And then this additional benefit, which is so beautiful of, you know, hey, I've given you the sales sheet in the right order, how based on your actions, et cetera, through this email marketing campaign. And now it's time to transition that conversation from a sort of an informing and information conversation into a sales conversation. Exactly. I think that that is valuable no matter what size organization you're in to think about how you're you know, sharing content, sharing value, and then how that value turns into a transaction. So cool, so cool. I also love the fact that you use a, a, a print example uh, in that analogy to, you know, and, and in your introduction, you mentioned you've been at, in this in this career path for a really long time. You bring a, a wealth of knowledge. So I think I'd love to chat with you about your career experience now and how you transitioned through, you know, from print into what you're doing now, serving more of a consulting role in email marketing. So, yeah, so it's pretty interesting because I, you know, as I, as you said, and as I, as the truth is that year 2K, I was doing risk, risk management for a printing company. Mm -hmm. And um, I was a, a, a tech person okay. assisting the designers create the magazine. Okay. okay. And we had a, a facility full of machines and we were all wondering what, what is going to happen year 2K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were supposed to literally, you know, just, you know, puff smoke and break. Right. Well, data right. just stop and computers, you know, start spitting out our data. But, so right. I had to do risk analysis of all the systems that we had. Wow. And in doing that, it mm -hmm. was quite clear to me that, um, in, you know, in discussing different businesses, dif different aspects of the business, different pieces of software, the company was going um, to play. So they were, they oh. were taking their print. Okay and taking it um, print to digital. Okay. So it okay. wasn't going to be done on a, you know, on a, on a physical print, uh, plate anymore and, you know, churned out as a magazine. Wow. It would become um, a digital product and mm -hmm. it would also become a digital process that would de develop the film to make the magazine. So everything Ooh. was going digital. Big change. It, it yeah. wasn't. It wasn't a leap of faith to realize. Well, why are we even making film? Why are we doing right. that? Right, At right, right. Point, literally, the business was sold a year later. Wow. Now, because I was in print, every job I went to, there was always that situation where, you know, we start off we're doing print. Eh, we're not doing print anymore. We don't need you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was getting laid off constantly in that right. year 2k to 2005 six okay situation where you know do you know digital and um it was a risk you know i i, I could do digital there's not a lot of digital out there but you know <laughs> whatever it is we'll, i'll see what we could do for each other yes we're like well we never heard of these companies you know these are brand new everything was brand new everything right. was it was beginning so um, I did a few of those, learned a lot, and realized that, um, unlike a friend of mine who said, oh, this is just a fad, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought, wow. you know, I've, I've got to get out of this industry. It's going to kill me. Right. And the things that I realized in the process was my career was not in my own hands. I was constantly getting laid off. Mm. I wasn't able mm. to control my own career. Right. Um, right. You know, Literally, I would, ha uh, I would have to be my own boss. Right. And being a solopreneur at that point in time, there wasn't even a word. It was mm. a you were a freelancer. You were okay. out there. And okay. the big fear was cash flow. For sure. For sure. So there I was thinking to myself, I'll moonlight for a little bit. Okay. I'll see what I can do. If I get laid off here, I'm still moonlighting. Mm -hmm. which is exactly what happened. I got laid off. Wow. And this is after the transition to digital. So you, you transitioned to print. Now I'm in print. I'm sorry. Yeah. Now I'm in completely digital. And now you're in digital. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. Websites. I'm doing, you know, um, 
everything that that used to be done in print i was doing on the web end so for sure for sure whether it's um you know taking uh, you know photographs of images and uploading the images for stores things of that nature i was doing all of these things for companies okay but um it being still in such flux right where literally big companies are eating little companies and little companies can't maintain themselves because mm -hmm. they may have be they may be going into this new technical age but they weren't built for that and i mean it was things were just changing so much in in or around you know the yeah. 2000 yeah. and 2010 so um i got laid off um and i just said i'm not gonna look for a full-time job mm. and at that point in time it was craigslist which was big and yeah. it wasn't so much of a scam and at that point in time it was actually um oh you know I, I i got three jobs out of craigslist and i was <sighs> literally getting lots of interviews with craigslist and i was networking with everybody and everything i could network with so i found mm. organizations that met yeah i would go to meetings um, yeah meet people i got on the board yeah I, did as much as I could do to get my name out there. Not okay. the brand, because I realized I couldn't sell myself, I couldn't do the work, I couldn't strategize, I couldn't do all of these things myself. Right, 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 right. And I didn't like that end of the, I don't like selling. Okay, okay. So I can talk about email marketing is because it's proven and it's true, but if you have to put me in a situation where I, I need to sell something that, mm, I can't do it. I can't make believe I'm into something I'm not into. You know, I'm okay. into email marketing because it works. It works. I'm not selling it. I'm telling you the truth. Right, right, right. So I um, did everything that I could do to, to punch my own skills up. I went back to school. I got a degree in, um, in, in programming. I, wow, okay. You know, I relearned HTML programming for email marketing. Right. I started developing campaigns. I started, I was, I already had print, so I knew how to write. I knew how right. to edit. I knew how to um, manage a calendar. I knew sales. I knew all of the things that are really inherent in email marketing because it's really part of print. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I took it on the road and I was lucky to end up working for some agencies okay um, at that point in time i don't think you could make it completely on your own i worked for a few different agencies and the agencies fed me clients and yeah. and i kept those clients for a really long time i had some clients i've had some clients for over 10 years amazing fantastic wow what a journey so, yeah, it's been quite you know the launch of my own so launching myself as a solopreneur and that word, what the word is maybe five years old. Maybe. Right. Launching myself as a solopreneur is a different, is a different concept because a lot of people will say, well, who do you work for? Uh, and that, yeah. yeah. Well, what yes. You, you know, what's your na the name of your company? Well, it's really, it's a skill. It's a skill set. It's, I don't have a company. Right. There are entrepreneurs that may um, build a brand around themselves. I, I'm the, I'm the concept of, I have a skill set. That's what I'm selling. Um, you know, I call it email and coffee. Yes. Because I love coffee and without it, I wouldn't be able to function. <laughs> but you know, it's really, you know, I, I'm an email marketing specialist. That's what I do. Right. Right. I love, there's so many fabulous jewels of wisdom in all of this from like being able to see the writing on the wall and like, you know, like, looking ahead and, and not only seeing the writing on the wall in terms of the end of your, let's say employment, but also back further seeing, Hey, this print thing, you know, why do we need film? Like what, what the heck is going on? So the, the vision is super cool. And then the, the courage to go out there and, and do it. Um, and then also the techniques, which are really interesting. You mentioned networking, you mentioned, um, you know, building up your skill set in terms of education. There are all these different things that you've been able to do and to, pull together to create a career for yourself that you're completely in control of. And I think so many people go into entrepreneurship. I know, um, you know, that's part of what drove me into entrepreneurship is like, Hey, I am going to 
sort of figure out how to earn, generate revenue for myself, not relying on any other person. So I have the flexibility to decide where my career path goes. And I really appreciate you sharing that. Wow. Okay. So if you had a bit of advice, so let, let me think of a good question. Hmm. Um, some advice of, of someone that is maybe in your shoes, similar to your shoes, has a skill set, maybe an email marketing, maybe some other technical skill set. What do you think is the most important part or most important thing for them to remember as they're stepping out um, and putting themselves out there? I'd say the uh, learning from my own temperament and um, the business. Yeah. One of the things, the mistakes that I made yes. was perhaps getting frustrated and angry. Oh. Um, I think that it's really important. And a lot of people will say it's okay to burn a bridge. Okay. But um, I'd say you don't know about that bridge. Interesting. The bridge may have a village next to it with a kingdom and fields and you just burn the whole kingdom to the ground. Yeah. You yeah. don't know when you burn one person if they are affiliated with other people. Right. And I'm not saying that you can't stand up for yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you don't let people know when something's wrong. Right. I am saying, be careful. Mm. If you are thinking of becoming an entity, whether it's right. a brand, an entrepreneur, which is really, you know, a solopreneur and an entrepreneur is very close, but, uh, an entrepreneur is thinking more along the lines of I'm branding myself out. A solopreneur is just saying, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm going to contract myself. Right, 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 right. I'm here by myself. So um, you got to think to yourself, how can I set this up so that I'm not burning people because I may need them in 10 years. Right. Not right. saying I need the resume, but in 10 years from now, you may walk into a business that you're, really interested in working with and, and see the person, you know, walk by that you burned the bridge mm. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I'm not going to get this. You know, this this was not for me. <laughs> not happen. I really wanted this, but this is not going to happen because I burned that bridge. Right. You don't know. People flow in and out of your life. So you really, you need to know the fine line of standing up for yourself, doing what's right. Mm -hmm. doing the right thing without having, like I said, don't blow up the kingdom. Ah, that's amazing, that's amazing. Learn learn the difference between anger, frustration, and um, standing up for yourself. Right, 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 right. That's beautiful advice. That's very, very beautiful. And underneath all of that is this self-knowledge, right? Like to be aware, you started off that phrase saying that you knew about, you've learned about your temperament over the years, and so, kind of underneath all that is like self-awareness. Notice what's making you angry, what's making you blow up and how you manage all that stuff. That is very, very true because in the end, as, as much as, um, you know, launching online courses, memberships, uh, you know, e-commerce, all these things are digital. There are people always on the other line. There's a person on the end of every email address. So yeah, these interpersonal skills are super important. Yeah. Wow. I would say, you know, th there are situations where you, you know, you may need to bring somebody to court. There may mm. be, you know, it, it may, there may be legal ramifications. And I'm not saying, oh no, don't do that. Right. You've got to stand up for yourself. Right. Right. But do so, you know, in a way that, um, you know, if you're there in front of Judge Judy, people are not looking at you going, oh, what's wrong with her? They're uh -huh. going, yeah, go, you go, you go, you know, right. they're, you just have to realize that um, things do have a way of, you know, the, the waters ripple and, you know, what happened here is over there. And, um, Interesting. Interesting. Just prepare yourself for that. Very cool. Beautiful advice. Beautiful advice. Thank you so much, Joy. This has been a really fun conversation. Where can everyone follow you or learn more about what you're doing? Well, I am at emailandcoffee.com. Okay, perfect. I am also Joy Brooks with an I, J-O-I, yes. Brooks at Twitter. So you can look for me there. Okay. Um, I am LinkedIn with the same Joy Brooks. So you could find me in those three places. 
Amazing. You can always find me in my computer, on my computer, <laughs> doing email <laughs> every day and loving it. And loving it and always a fabulous conversation. So I really appreciate you taking the time to have this Thanks conversation. Yeah, and you have a great day. You too. All right, bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to be notified for the next episode. If you know someone that would benefit from this episode, please share. If you are ready to improve your launch results, visit Dr. Ada's website at www.operationsallied.com. All of the links mentioned in the episode are in the description below. Have a great day.